in the face! Welcome back to the Mullet's Punch in the Face video blog right here on PaulLazenBeat.com. And today, I would like to discuss the recent Strikeforce Heavyweight Tournament Final that took place in San Jose, California. Now, after 16 months of snafus, miscues, and boo-boos, they finally managed to get the final fight into the cage, pitting MMA pioneer Josh the Warmaster Barnett against two-time Olympian and one-time tournament second alternate Daniel Cormier. Now that fight and most of the card underneath it provided some of the best MMA action in recent memory and also gave us a new player on the international scene as Cormier dominated Barnett and walked away with the heavyweight tournament title. However, in the wake of that show, the cloud of uncertainty that's been hanging over Strikeforce since its acquisition by UFC parent company Zufa seems to have grown darker and more ominous. People are getting concerned that Strikeforce has turned into kind of a feeder league or developmental territory for the UFC. And I'm not going to pretend that the fans haven't been seeing the Strike Force cage for some time as kind of a bullpen for its eight-sided big brother. And with fighters right up to Gilbert Melendez and Luke Rockhold making open challenges for cross-promotional fights, it's obvious that the fighters aren't fooled either. And really, how are you going to look at Strike Force any other way? I mean, they've never been the same size as UFC, so they can't be seen as competition. And it only makes sense that now they, they belong to Zufa, they'll be cherry-picked for their talent, they'll be used as a developmental league for up-and-comers, and they'll also be a kind of MMA purgatory for fighters who, for whatever reason, can't stay in UFC but retain some sort of value to the company. So, with it established that yes, Strike Force is a feeder league, I think that begs the larger question of, what the hell's wrong with that anyway? You know, just because you're a support organization for the biggest group in the world, it doesn't mean you can't be just as exciting as they are. Cormier and Barnett proved that. And I would go a step further and say that feeder league status actually makes Strike Force a little bit more awesome than they used to be. Because what it does is it instills in some UFC caliber fighters a type of hunger you usually only see in up-and-comers who are still climbing the hill. I mean, we got the best of both worlds here, people. We got the best developing talent, and we also have a handful of fighters who are already established, already competitive with most other fighters on the planet, but they're still chasing that carrot on a stick of a UFC roster spot, as opposed to maybe having that spot and being complacent and just doing enough to hang on to it, as UFC fighter Jacob Volkman reportedly admitted to doing in a recent interview. So, is Strike Force a feeder league? Yes. Is that a bad thing? Hell no. Strike Force, you keep doing what you're doing. You keep those fighters hungry, and it's only going to result in better MMA action for an MMA fan base of which I am a very satisfied member. And that is the Mullis Punch in the Face video blog. I will see you next time. Thank you, Fusion Bodybuilding. Thank you, Roots of Fight. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Corey Grimm, for making this video blog what it is and for giving me the finger behind the camera. I really appreciate that. And until next time, this is Paul the Muller Lazenby wishing you happiness, health, and a punch in the face.